Today's video we will be dealing with downstand beams. Uh, in the model I've got in front of me I've got two slabs at uh, various levels and I've got a beam um, joining these two. So for this slab we've got a 400 uh, deep slab and this slab is a 300 deep slab and joining the two slabs is a polybeam. It's modeled as a polybeam and it's a 1400 by 400. Now just to uh, make this a bit more clear at the moment, we're showing this as cast in situ parts and they in the merged view. So if we double click on our window and we go to display and under uh, cast in place parts, instead of showing merge, we show separated, modify, okay, okay. It will now show, uh, you'll have a visual on, on separate parts, similar to what you would get in cast unit parts, but it's uh, it, you can now clearly see how this has been modeled. Now, I've modeled it this way because if I had to model concrete from scratch, this is the way I would do it. It just makes for easy uh, reinforcement detailing if your target is to reinforce. If not, you might want to do it the other way. There's also the possibility that if you've imported this from an IOC, that it would be the other way, and then you'll have to reverse the process, that what, what I'm going to show. Um, I also have a view on uh, grid line D. So if we look where grid line D is, it's basically an elevation on this wall. So if we just tab over, it's this elevation. So you can see in 3D what that looks like. And um, so what I'm going to do in this one, I'll also just uh, quickly change the display to a uh, separate uh, element. Okay, okay, so we can see them. All right, so with that, let's just start quickly. And as uh, as a reinforcement type, I will just pay. Uh, I will just use 16s at 200. Or 16 at 300 is probably better. It gives us a bit more working space for everything, uh, and and we'll see how we go. So, crossing bars to start out with, and what I'll do is I'll go over to the catalog, rebar catalog, select my uh, 16 main, and for the color I'm going to set it as two for the main. For the start and end offset I'm going to leave it as is. For the target spacing 300 is good, and for the exclude none. So that should be okay, and I'll pick that as a main direction. Normally, it's the short direction of the of the um, slab will be your outer layer. I'll pick that one and say, okay, I'm happy with that. And I'll also pick this bottom one and say, okay, I'm happy with that. Now, just before we move over to the next layer, I'm just going to um, tweak these two layers so um, it's easier to see what I'm doing. So if we look at the top layer, we can see that because the slab was only modeled today, we need to extend into the beam. So the easy fix for that is to click on the part or on the reinforcement and make sure that we've got our leg faces selected. And then click on the leg face and then drag that leg face to the beam. And that sorts out that reinforcements now carried through into the beam. Now, if we look at the others, so if I click on this bottom slab, right click holding shift and say uh, show only selected. And then while it's selected, right click and say show assembly. Uh, sorry, show assembly. It will show the reinforcement. We can see we're missing a face here. So what we can do with that is if we click on this and we say add a leg, and then we can pick that face. If you can't pick that face, make sure that in the bottom tab here, you see you can you can toggle your modes. Make sure you're in the single point mode. If you go multi-point mode, Tecla won't light up a face, it's expecting you to pick points, as you can see from the bottom here, pick points to define the leg face. So if, um, we'll just toggle across to a single point and we'll pick that face and that sort of sorts that out. And now what we need to do, do a redraw all, we need to make sure that these bars also carry through to the end of the beam. So we'll just drag that to the end. So they carry through to the end and that sort of uh, fixes up the geometry of the bar. Now before we move on, we need to split them. So if I click the top part, I'll switch off my leg visibility because we don't need it now. And then I'll go to splitter. I'll make sure that my defaults are loaded, standard lapping. And then for a 16 bar, a normal split would be 900 millimeters, a leg length for your U-bars. The intention is we're creating U-bars at the end. So I'll split them there and also I'll split them here at 900 millimeters. So that splits the top of that, that slab. And moving over to the bottom part, I can then go splitter, split this end at 900, and also split this end at 900. There we go. And now we've got these two ends splitted, but on the top, we've got that one splitted, but not this side. So we need to split this side as well. Now, if I split this side, Tecla's gonna split right through the slab, which we don't want. So then if we hover over this one, you can see it sort of highlights that arrow there. We can then grab that arrow 
sometimes you need to grab it twice and move it to the end of the beam so you sort of have a continuity if i click on the bar you can see that splitter sort of stops there and this splitter stops there and the result will be that you have you know your u bar split in the right places now because we only split on the top face because we only split once we can then pick this bottom bar click this splitter holding your control key click this splitter and also select that splitter you've got three splitters now in your control pane or your property pane we can then say copy special linear and we can then copy those splitters to the bottom of the slab copy and that then splits all of the reinforcement for us and now we have u bars at the end and straight bars linking them all across that slab and that slab ties nicely into there we can do the same in the top now because uh, when we, we were in control p and plan view it's this view you see where the grid line is it's that view the splitter will be placed in this slab closest to that plane so it's then at the bottom of the slab so if we click that control click that we now copy special linear to the top of the slab say so copy and that wraps up all those bars so you can see these are all used on both sides and straight bars in the end now what we can do just before we move on as a last thing is just look at the spacing quickly now if i click on that and i click on the control line here and i look and i sit uh, modify the spacings it will give me the dimensions so what i like to do is i like to space my reinforcement at um you know i have a cover at the end here of at least 100 millimeters so if it's a 16 bar and i'll show you the reason for that in a second so i'll just go there and hard code the 100 millimeter offset both sides and then what you need to do is make sure that you still get sensible say spacing here in our case it worked out just because our slab dimension probably worked with us so we've got eight to 300 but if that's not the case you might have to resort into a flexible first last middle or first and last whatever works out best and the reason i'm saying that is because if you have nice spacings like this eight at 300 um that is spacings by the way the bar number is nine you can see there that's nine and that's eight um you get nice drawings you know it makes nice drawings but it also makes that the rebar fits better and I'll, I'll point this out in elevation soon so if i go to the bottom i'm going to do the same i'll click and i'll click on the spacing line and if we modify we can see again we get these silly um uh, spacings it's just it's trying to fit the maximum with the minimum amount of cover needed but if we force the cover on both ends to say 50 and we go 50 well actually we used 100 100 for 16 so 100 there and 100 there i say enter you can see that the spacing now turns out to be 16 at 300 again it's because we have good slab dimensions that, that it's working out nice for us but again if that wasn't the case you can always just go and say flexible first and last and that means all your intermediate spacings will be exactly at 300 and you'll just have an odd one in the first and the last space which is okay for drawing so in this case this is exactly what we want i just want to make sure with this one again we've got 300 and we've got 100 okay now with that that pretty much sorts out that direction you can also see that these bars go inside perfectly now now they're not clashing because we have this vertical separation for, for the beam and it works in our favor because now the leakages can line up quite nicely the, the beam leakages now that we know that the process is um, for that direction we can do the second direction quicker so it's crossing bar and this time we'll just pick a class three just to separate the the um, layers with color We'll stick to the 100 a target spacing of 300 and the rest is the same now we can pick this direction and say okay we're happy with that we can also pick this direction in the bottom slab and say okay we're happy with that and now again like before we just need to make sure that these tie in so what we can do is make sure our leg visibility is on again and then grab this green bar grab this leg and then drag this leg to the end of this beam so to make sure that that leg actually ties into the beam there and then with the bottom one again for ease we'll click on the beam right click shift show only selected while it's selected right click show assembly it shows the rebar and again the uh, 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 u-bars will be omitted here because they now belong to the the the, the 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 beam so what we can do in this case because we're missing a leg here we can click on the bar head over to our add leg face and pick this leg face and that fixes that up so now we've got our leg there redraw to see everything click on the green bar click on the face and drag it into this beam so now we can see we've got tie in the bottom in both directions and we've got tie in the top both directions now all that's there is just to split the bars up so what we can do is pick the green ball 
switch off the leg visibility and then go over to our splitter load our defaults in case we make changes and again with this one it's a 16 bar so i prefer a 900 leg or it's common to specify a 900 leg so we'll break it at the bottom we'll also break it at the top 900 and then we still need to break this part here so if we go 900 here and we break it there or split it there we just need to grab this modifier to the end of the beam there so you have continuity between if i click on the bar again between that split it starts there up to the beam and then from the beam yeah up to the end of the slab okay now we need to do the same in the top we get the green bar we'll split it at 900 we just got to find it there we go 900 and then same on the other side we've got 900 and now they're all split and now we just need to copy them to the bottom so we'll start with this one See, select this modifier control that modifier and then say right tick copy special linear and we'll copy from the bottom of the slab to the top of the slab and then we go to the green bars at the bottom slab this modifier control that modifier control this modifier right click copy special linear and we copy from the top of the slab this time to the bottom of the slab copy clear okay if we now do a redraw that's pretty much done the slabs so we've got the slabs in both directions interlocking very nicely now back to that 100 millimeter offset on both sides if I, I go to the other view where we can see it from the side and i'll just do a redraw so we see everything i'll also go transparent now we can see clearly yeah uh, why the the if i just take a dimension f from the main bar to the end we can see there's 100 moles and if i go to the other side where the bar start it will be from this end from this bar end we can see 100 moles it's just a good dimension and it's just something that in my career i've developed as a sort of a rule of thumb for 16 millimeter bar obviously it's a bit less for 12s probably 62 millimeters or 65 millimeters and you work it up as the bars increase but it keeps it away from this sort of rounding if you had tickler's default dimension this bar would probably right be on the rounding there or just inside and you always have a bit of an overlap so i always just push them a little bit in and it seems to always work well for me especially with um with uh, uh with uh, uh, uh you know spacings if you want to maintain uh, a specific spacing right so with that I'll just flip over to our 3D view again, and now it's time to start looking at the beam reinforcement. Now, what I'm going to do for the beam, just to make it clearer, I'm going to go and select uh, CIP beam filters only, and that will give me the beam. So you can see there. So we've got a longer beam and a shorter beam. And also, you can now clearly see from this assembly that um, the U bars now belong to the to the beam because the biggest part of the of the ligature you know the 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 uh, middle of gravity sits within this element and not the slab because the slab edge yeah you can always click on them right click attach to part and go and attach it to the slab if you want but in this case i'm just going to leave it as is because i actually want to see them while i work with them so for this i'm going to select the crossing bar i'm going to still select the 16s and then i'll change this to a five class just to have a different color I will delete the offset so we can tweak them later and the distribution will be 300 and everything is okay and then i'll select the cross section and what i'm going to do now is i can see that tickler has now put that node into the bottom i think what you can do is you can drag this to the to the top there and you can drag this one to the top there just to change where tickler will put in the joint like so and then what you can do is select this adjust guideline location and you can see tickler creates uh, um, um, faces for the reinforcement everywhere where it's yellow so it's always going to put a leg in here which is not what we don't want so what you can do is you can drag this node up to just inside that corner just to make sure that it doesn't create a face beyond that point and say okay so we have legs in there and you can see that tickler is creating a bit of a smaller bar because it's already not recognizing that We'll deal with that now i'll do the same on this side and again what we can do is just drag this up to there and drag this up to there to make sure that it, it breaks the bar on the top and then again introduce our guideline and just move it inside inside that somewhere there 
and say OK. Right. Now that we've done that, what we can do is go Control P to see it from the top. Make sure our leg visibility is on. And then if we click this, we can then see where Tekla has um, given us the um, faces, where it ends the faces. We can now hold in the alternate key, select over those faces. Oops. Select alternate, select over the faces. And then say move linear and move that to the inside of the beam. And now if we look at it, we can see that the face is all the way there. And we'll deal with the um, spacing and so forth in a minute. Also, the spacing line, if you look at the spacing line, yeah, Tekla's, we can just drag that to the inside there to make sure that we're only dealing with a, a spacing in, 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 in sort of this direction. I just want to make sure that the spacing line, you see also this, it's got to go to the end there. I don't know why it's come up with that such a short spacing line there, but it's always stuff you need to check. So in here, this one, we can do exactly the same. Again, we can hold in the alternate key and select over these handles. And this time, modify a uh, move linear. We can move that to the end of the beam. Now, the reason why I've done it this way is that if you do it in another way, you get faces all over the show and it confuses Tekla a little bit when you start tweaking your intersections like this. So this way is sort of a uh, sure way to get the result you want. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this one and then I'll switch off my leg visibility just for a minute. And I'll say give me a end modifier. Make sure that I load my uh, default. 90 degrees fine. I'll hover there over this edge and just uh, break that. And this one I'll hover over this edge and you've got to select the bar first for that to work. And then say end modifier over this. And then again, you can see how far that end modifier goes out. So what we can do is just hover over it, grab this arrow to the inside there because it doesn't need to go any further than that. And that's it. And now we just need to look at the location of the bar in terms of a layering. Also in here, so you can see how Tekla is sort of what it's done with the spacing line. I'm not quite sure why it's, it's going not to the full length of the beam, but it doesn't matter because it's an easy fix. So if you click on that, click on that, that's all good. Okay, so now in terms of the um, the uh, the um, uh, what do you call it, the offset, you know, the cover, the layer that this bar is in, because these bars, these bars that I've clicked on now, is inserted after those, it will take the next sort of layer. So you can see there by default too. So we can switch on our leg visibilities. Now there is a way that you can just click you know, move to the outer. But if you do move to the outer, it moves this to the inner. And that's not what you want. You don't want to disrupt these bars. You've already detailed, you know, it's right. So the way around that is just to click on this face and just move it into the second face to, to join the green bars. Remember our green bars is our second face bars. We can do the same in the top. Click on this face and say move to two. And then you can move this face to one because you want that on the outer face of the beam. And you can move this face one and that sort of gets that ligature if we now look at that ligature it's exactly where you want it to be now this ligature is a bit different because that goes into your first face so on the outside again that's one and we can flip it around do this outside face click on that face and make that one that changes that now below it needs to go to the first face because the red bars are our layer one bars and then if we do the top the same, click that and make that one as well. Now, both those ligatures, now that was a bit of a manual operation, but the result is you've got full control over those ligatures. They go exactly in the zones you want. And uh, you've also got them in the right layer so they don't clash with any other bars. Now, the last thing we need to do is if we go control P, the last thing we need to do is just look at spacing quickly. So let's start with the short beam. If we look at this beam, and I switch off the leg uh, visibility, I beg your pardon, rebar, visibility, leg visibility. We switch it off. We also switch off the uh, property modifiers. I don't want to see these purple lines. So if we now click away, click on the bar again, it's strange that we still see it, although it's uh, switched off here. Oh, sorry, that's an end detail modifier. Beg your pardon. Um, so we can only see our, our beam there. So if we go control P, we, we've seen that the arrow, if you look at this arrow, the start point is this end. Okay, so if the start point is that end and we go back and see, if we go F to measure and we measure from this leg to this leg, we can see that's 81. If we measure F 
from this leg to the end there, we can see that's 100. And that's the 100 leg. That's the 100 we put in before. Remember, we split them. That's why they're showing this off leg. So what we can do with this is because we now know this is the start, we can make this 119, I think we'll do. Now 119 plus. Um, now the 19 that I'm talking about yeah, is, is the diameter of the bar. So this is a 16 millimeter bar. So the outside diameter is 19 for an actual bar. So if we add another nine and a half to that, so it's 119 plus 9.5. If we put 128.5 in, yeah, 128.5. That sort of moves us up. Now it looks it looks funny on the top, but it's the bottom that 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 really. Okay, so you can see um, the, it's not working the way I calculated. I think if we swap this around, if we click here, and we just swap this around, um, you can see we get a flatter leg on this side. But now remember that our um, our start is now on the opposite end. So what we need to do, you see, it's already flipped this around for us. So if we now go back to the 119, we can see we get a much better result there. So it's something you can just sort of play with and, and you'll quickly figure out how the ligatures work. You know, it's a bit of a, a you can see from that leg, it's a, it's sort of a distorted uh, 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 rebar, but you can figure it out and there's a solution. Now, in terms of the spacing, we know that these are spaced at 300 and you can see from our, if we just click on our line here and we say, um, show the dimensions you can see we've got a really odd spacing here so what we can do here is we can say give us an odd now we know this is the end uh, sorry this is the yeah this is the end side that's the start side so what we can say is show us an odd first space if we do that and say modify it fixes up all these bars and we have this odd first space and because that first space is not really applicable we can also say exclude the first bar and if you say modify, we then have this perfect situation where our ligatures, the right number, the right spacing works for us in that area. Now let's reply that, uh, apply that process on this side as well. What we can do is first of all, just tilt it around and see where our, our start is. So our starts on this side, so it ends on that side. So what we can go, control P, we can say, give us a end of 119. Let's just do that. That fixes that up. Again, we can say our start is a flexible. Okay, that fixes up the spacing. And if we hover over to the end, we've got this odd one again, and we can say, okay, omit the odd, omit the first bar, modify. And just like that, we now have perfect spacings in our beam. So it works perfectly with the with the slab, and that's probably the biggest challenge. Now what we can do is just look at the um, horizontal steel, and that's really, really easy. So if we go to crossing bar in this case, and we'll pick the 16 still, and we'll change the color to a six, a class to a six. We'll omit the start and the end. We will say that we are looking at a target of 300 for now, and we will show all the bars for now. And then what I'll do is just hover over the whole section. And I'll say, okay, I'm happy with that. And we'll get bars like that. Now, from the from now, we can see that um, we don't want the top set and the bottom set because that's going to be main reinforcement. We're going to chuck bigger bars in there. So if we click on the bars as a start and we say omit the first and the last, we can just say modify. So then we're left with the three bars in the middle that we want. So that's a perfect solution. Okay, now let's wrap them up before we put the main bars in. So Tickler sees this as a sort of a ligature at the moment. You can see the crossing bars there. So what we can do here is we can say split this bar load our standard default to so make sure that everything splits okay so if we split this bar you can see how it overlaps there but now just a word of uh, uh, interest here you don't have to do it but it's it's good uh, uh, detailing practice if you click on this bar and you click and, and you look at the dimensions it's showing you, it shows it shows you a hook of 350 by 350. now i call that a hook because uh, you know essentially this is going to end up like a double l bar with a hook now for a 16 bar if you look at a 16 bar, it's it's, it's called the n16 by identification because of the nominal diameter but the actual diameter is 19 millimeters and the hook you want on a bar is normally you know, for most machines to work with it is uh, 10 times the bar diameter. So it's 90, it's it's 190 mil. So we round it off to 200. So to get a 200 there, the 350 first comes from this. If you click on the on the splitter, you'll see that the standard lap for a 16 is 700. So that's where the 300 comes from. It's 700 divided by two. So you get 350 this side, 350 that side. So what you can do is you can take standard, make it custom, and then change the 700 to 400. 
And once you do that, click away and then click on the bar again, you can see we get our 200 hook we want because that's at the end of the day what this bar is going to be. It's going to be a double L. It's going to be a bar with hooks on both ends. ends. And that's just a quick quick way of, of managing the, the fact that they lap perfectly and managing the hook at the same time. Now what we can do is hover over to this end where we don't have a break yet. We can click on that and we can induce the split. And now we still have the 400. If we then go to the middle there, we can then see just just that Tecla is generating a, a you know a, a, a odd dimension for us. It's because um, it's trying to fit again that 400 into those two. So what we can do is in this splitter we can just round it down. Now I happen to know that 75 works well here. Yeah? You can just play play with it by putting in a value there, clicking away, reselecting the bar, and see what these little tabs come up with, and just. Keep on doing that until you get your desired hook. So in this case, uh, 75 works well as an overlap. 75 is the overlap. It does and it gives you a hook of, of 200. Now, in that case, if we just go and select single bar mode, we click on this bar, right click, inquire. We can then see what we've achieved. We've achieved two 200 millimeter hooks with a 2330 in the middle. And that's sort of the, the uh, sort of good solution for um, a, a beam's distribution steel. We can do the same on this end. Click here, introduce a splitter. Now, because we still have the 70 set there, we can just split that. We'll get the 200. You can see the 200 light up there. Now, the only thing that we need to do, you'll see if you hover over to the side, it looks like they're on top of each other again. It's because we haven't split this inner corner. Again, you need equal splits. Either one split or equal splits to generate, um, you know, to not overlap. So if we click on that bar, we can go to splitter and we can just um, load our standard again to get rid of that 75. Hover over to this edge and we can see there for inner hooks, Tecla will just cross them, which is good practice and that's very normal to do it that way. Um, but the, it's too long. So what you can do is click on this, again, go to your custom lapping and we can just change that to 400. So they just predict like, 200 millimeters in each side. And that's a pretty good solution for distribution steel for the beam on the inside. Now that we've done that, we can focus on the top and the bottom reinforcement. Now, for the top and bottom reinforcement, again, it's very easy. There's a few ways. I'll show you the one way first. If we go to longitudinal, which is, you can see from the dots there, it's the, the, the um, you know, longitudinal steel. We can then pick a 20 millimeter just to make it a little bit bigger. And then I'll pick a really bright color like seven. And again, we'll make sure that instead of target, we pick the number off because we just want to add two bars in there. And again, we say generate all the bars. And now if we hover over that and we pick the top and we say, OK, you can see Tickler does put a bar in there and it does put it in the correct space. But the issue here is if I click on the bar and I look at the leg faces, Tickler selected all of the top face. Now, it's not really a problem in this scenario, but it can be a problem if you want to add hooks, controlled hooks at the end, which is what I want to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that bar. A way that I found, a method that I found that works really, really well with full control in this is to go to more, point input, linear. We've still got our settings. And then what I'll do is I'll say that this bar, because this is our dominant direction, it's our longer beam, is going to go from that end to that end and then middle mouse to accept the shape. And then for the spacing, the guideline goes from this side to that side. And just like that, we've got the same result, but the difference being is if I now click on it, you can see the face is now exactly just that face we want. Now, the beauty of that is, before we put on the, the hooks, I'm gonna take this, this beam and I'm just gonna split it. You can also see that the, the, the cover is perfect. I'm gonna go and say, I want a splitter in here load the default but the splitter type we can use a crank for this longer beam just for the sake of having one and then we can hover sort of midsection anyways wherever you want wherever the dimension wants but we can just say midsection for there just to have something you can now see we've got a crank in that beam and we still got the beam in the right layers and now at the end yeah and maybe for effect what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put more bars in here so we can actually have a bar closer so instead of saying a target i will go number now we have five i'm going to make it six and i think that's going to be the wrong value let's just go seven. Oh, that looks that looks much better okay that that will work for us what i'm trying to do is get a buyer so you can see the clashing that i'm talking about so if we click on this bar now and you see we've got a guideline there let's switch it off so it, it doesn't interfere with us 
what I want is this edge of the surface. If I click on that edge, you now got a got a leg face um, edge. So what we can do with that now is if we are holding our control key, take it and grab it and drag it down, we can create a 300 millimeter leg. So um, it's not dragging. Let me just undo that. Sorry, let me just delete that face and I'll redo that. Because somehow I, I can't drag, oh, there we go. I want the 300 leg there. And now you can see with this leg, that tickler's automatically worked out how much cover it needs to miss that bar. And that you only get when you're adding a leg. If I had to put a normal, a normal, let me delete that face one more time. And what I'll do is I'll click on that and say, give me a hook. And now if I put a standard hook on you and just hover over, over this, this yeah, you can see that the, it's a problem with cover because hooks is, it's not a face, it's a hook. So just wherever the cover ends, it, you know, it applies the 25 or whatever you put on this beam. So um, not a good idea. So if I go visible and I just switch on my end modifiers, I can then grab that end modifier and just delete it. And then what I can do now is I can say, um, grab this edge, holding your control key, then pull it down to 300. And just like that, you can see layer number two, and it's figured out that, hey, there's a bar there, I need to miss it. And that's the way you control it perfectly. Now with that, knowing that, we can just sort of go to this side, click on this bar. And now, because we don't have a face that side, we only have a face yeah, it's easy to then grab that edge, holding control and pull this down by 300. And you get your control there. Now, again, this one will clash there because it's seeing layer. If you click on this, it's light up layer two because it's seeing the these bars. So all you have to do is click on this one and say it's actually got to be layer three. No working out of dimensions. It's it's pretty cool the way you can do that. Um, you know, it just gives you a bit more control. Now that you've got that, we can do the other side as well. We can just say go more point input. The bar goes from this edge to that edge. And for our guide, it goes from this side to this side. And because we had the yellow bar settings, that's still yellow bar. The quick fix is you click on the purple bars, you go paint, you click on these bars and you say, once it's lit up, modify, it fixes up that for us. And now what we can do with this is, you can see sort of how Tickler is trying to miss everything. Very smart. Um, what we can do now is first of all, because these bars are so long, they're not really long. You could lose, you could you could leave it as one bar, but it's not good practice, especially in uh, you know long beams where they need to fit in bars. They they might want to use the lap to to do some stuff with. So we can just say split, and this time I'll just load my standard. So we'll use a normal split here. And what I'll do is I'll just go to say for instance, you know, uh, if we pick an I don't know pick like any dimension really, 1200. Okay. Now that's sort of lapped them one inside the other one, if you can see there. And the result is that we have a bit of a clash here because it's pushed this bar inwards, it's pushed, pushed that one inwards. Now if we look at our guideline, our guideline is switched off at the moment. If we go to visibility, you can see it's switched off. It's the start we want to manipulate. So if we take the start and we just make that 125, let's start with well, 115, let's start 125, let's just see where we get. 125, enter. We can see we're still clashing a bit on this end, yeah? So if we go for 115, we then miss this bar, oops. We then miss this bar, as you can see there, and we're still lapping nicely in there. Perfect. So now all we need to do is to grab this bar. I'll switch off the guide so it doesn't bother us. Grab this edge and then holding the control and drag this edge down to our 300 dimension again. Or whatever the hook is that you want to insert here. And again, just looking at it, take this smart enough to miss the cover. And then we can, if we hover this one around, like so, we can then grab this bar, that edge, control, and then drag this down. So control adds. We can then see we get a perfect cover there. And just like that, we now have a good intersection there with absolutely no cover. Now, to get these bars in the bottom, what we can do is flick over to our um, elevation. I'll do a redraw. And now for us to use the um, right-click uh, copy mirror command, we need our axis to be X, Y in this. So go to view, work plane, parallel to view plane, click on this plane. 
that will change our axis to x and y yeah and the z pointing towards us and now if we click on this and that bar those two bars we can then say right click copy special mirror now in here you'll see that it's, uh, jumping to the middle of that beam is can be quite challenging there is a way you know like that is sort of you know it's picking up a midpoint there somewhere it's picking up a midpoint or something there but if you're very persistent, you just move slightly down, you sort of get close to this bar. You can see it does get a midpoint there. If you can't, you know this is 1400. What you can do is you can hold in your control key, click there, and then come down to the bottom, get a measurement. You see it's 1400. Then you can just type in half of 1400, which is 700. You could say 700, enter. And that gives you a temporary snapping point there. You can see the red there it indicates temporary snapping. And you can just hover over to the other side. You know, if you've got also on, you can just hover over to the other side, click. It's worked out everything it needed to do. And you can say copy. And it copies it to the bottom. You can clear OK and quit the command. Now, just like that, we've copied those bars on the bottom. If we flick back to the 3D view, we can then look at have a look at that beam. And you can see how nicely everything there sort of fits without flashing. And now if we go back and we just select our standard to view everything, we have a slab and a beam and everything uh, sort of um, clash free inserted. Now, I, uh, you know, um, I hope there's a few things you've learned in terms of using your odd first odd start spacing and also emitting bars. Um, you can see how effectively you can use it in making rebar detailing easier for yourself. So I hope uh, this was um, valuable for you. I hope you've learned a few things and I'll see you in the next video.